Davla. How you doing, bud? I said it over the top of you then, didn't I? You were going to say, good morning, and I interrupted you. Don't ever interrupt me again. I know. Sound like my kids when they talk to me. <laughs> so. <laughs> right, I'll show We've got. <laughs> this is a game, that is. Yes. This is a tagged up Lamborghini Huracan GT3 engine. So, there's nothing wrong with it. It's in for a uh, service refresh for the rest of the season. But we're going to see if we can strip a V10 in an hour. Ooh. No we pressure, then. We should get pretty close. Go. Let's do it. Welcome back. So, we've obviously gone through the intro, but we have got a Lambo Huracan GT3 engine, which will follow in nicely from the Mercha Lago we did last week. Yeah. Uh, and this is tear down. So, I said last week I hate air guns and battery guns, but this week I've cracked them off, but I'm just going to use it. And if you can hear some noise in the background, that's it's, the um, uh, Mr. Pro detail. With his products that are for sale. <laughs> so. What people don't realise takes forever is all the ancillaries. So we will fuel pumps. Normally we ask for this stuff to be taken off, but it didn't happen. So we will start stripping. Are we shutting the door now? Such a considerate soul, isn't he? I think it's actually Mitch doing it. So, we're just gonna. Cheers, Mitch. What a hero you are, Mitchell. So, heat shield off. This protects the top of the engine from the exhaust manifold. And that's an inlet manifold rubber, so. So we've got that one off. Then we've got cam sensor. Look, all potted connectors, look. So normally the wiring loom connects directly onto the sensor. And on these, look, they've been potted. So they all sit in holders up on the top to make uh, engine installation much easier. So motorsport thing. Motorsport. Yes, mate. I like motorsport stuff. Because it's thought out. So is this an engine you've seen before or is this a new No, one? we haven't seen this, this one before. Uh, so obviously we do SBR stuff. Um, or SB Motorsport. And then this one's come in. So yeah, we will get it torn down. As they say in the States. Torn in. I know, it's such a crap word. But because we know it's a good engine, unless we find a problem, we're not fault finding yeah. do you know what I mean it's not like the RS3 we did a little bit like the Mercy we stripped that down we knew that the head gaskets were leaking so until we kind of got there you know you're paying attention but we're not yeah it's not playing detective diagnostic process yeah so mate that light is fancy yeah we can see what we're doing for a change no expense spared on this channel I figured out the other day, I am 1.7% uh, the man Matthew Armstrong now is. <laughs> <laughs> so if any of you hadn't seen, Matt hit a million subs this week. Fair play. Yeah, yeah, and I, I messaged him because when we first hooked up, he was on 68,000, which is still an impressive amount yeah but yeah now he's a million subs so yeah the boy's done well he has done well that is stuck okay. nice and gentle so 
we put new covers on it, but that is rock cover off. Bit fuely. You see how black it is? Yeah, yeah. So that's more sort of right. What head am I on? This is right head, so right trolley. So just in my head, it's easier. Right, so we've got to take Cambridge off. So we'll just pop the protections off the sensor. So this is exhaust cam on the right bank, which is called bank one. So the engine is sat in the car this way. So this is the back. Yep. So this is the right hand bank. So we'll just pop these off. So I guess, as with all the engine builds, it's methodical, you know where everything is, yep. you keep track of it. Yeah, strip it down onto a trolley. So just make sure like you've got no paste or build up like that, can you see? Where it's a magnetic sensor, look, it just yep. starts to pick up. So I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but. Same with this one. Again, just a little bit. Yep. It's all stuff you sort of clean off as you put it back together. Right, so now we've obviously got a pull. We've got a coolant hose that will take off both heads. Then I can pull off the two pumps in one. So because, because the hose is clamped on, so that's the feed hose in, so you've got fuel coming in through this hose, past the low pressure sensor, up each bank into the low into the high pressure pumps, yep. yeah, and they're joined. So what we we try to minimise how much we use these hoses. Mm -hmm. So I'll leave those two pumps. I'll take two pumps off as one with that joining hose, but we'll take off the um, the union the high pressure pipe. Yep. So then it's hard lined to each rail. Like so, yeah. So we'll do we'll do it that way, and we'll take basically the low pressure. Oh, you smell that? That's race fuel, bro, yeah. mate. So high up That's race team. fuel. Doesn't smell like petrol. So then we end up with all these anti-vibration clamps. So let me just, yeah, I'm going to show you now. So they're a three part clamp. So you get a rubber insert that goes around the pipe. Yeah. Yep. That pushes into the U clamp like so. Then you get the back. So you end up with that, and then that fixes in. Hang on, hold on a second. Hold it still. Oh. Steady. Got it. They're the fiddliest things in the world. Never try and put them together when the inlet's open, because they will disappear. I got sent a video by a friend at an Audi centre, and he sent me a photo down the spark plug tube, and they dropped one of those down the intake. Oh. Yeah and they spent two days getting it out. Right, that is left head, so that is down here. So. That is a bad day at the office. That's a, yeah. They were lucky, because they hooked it out, they pushed the valves open, and then used the tool. They're stainless as well, so not magnetic. Um, and they used a the tool, so they were lucky. But he was messaging me going, uh, how do you think I'm gonna get this out? I'm like, mate, if you can't get that out of the port, that's head off. So. That's like the cardinal sin as well. Like working on carbs, taking carbs off or screws out of carbs and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, with the inlet o inlets open, so. Which is why there's tissues in, you know? Even then, you, you're not reckless with the tissues, but at least, you, at least you've got a fighting chance if you drop anything. Yeah, of course. It's so. a sort of mistake you'll make once and that's it.
Right, so we've got a bracket this side. So we've got knock sensor bracketry as well. So we'll crack one. Crack two. Right. So the intake for the low pressure side is here, look. Yeah. So we've got three screws that hold that in. Oh. And it's tight. So do we know what sort of um, use this has had? This has done 10,000 kilometers. Right, okay. Which is the first, this is the first service. Right. They call it first service. What it should be called is the first refresh. Yeah. It's the first refresh. So, one, two, if we can try and get some pics of the, um, the actual car this came out of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll drop that into the bit. Right, that's loose, that's loose. There's one. There's one. Like so, pop these ones off there. Pop that one off there. So, all right, I've got a pile of screws and a pile of fittings, but as long as I know that down in this corner is where I'm gonna put my fuel pumps, yep. then it all makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So, I need a 13, then the, the head, the, so this is the breather for the head. So obviously the head is the highest point, and then this pipe joins both of those ports to allow the air to come out the top of the head, because yep. obviously the head's slanted. So having the outlet hose on the back is no good. So there's got to be an outlet at the top and that's what these two are, those two banjo bolts. So we need to take those two off to get this coolant pipe off and then we can lift the fuel system off of one. Cool. So these might be under pressure because they're under, if the lobe is acting on the pump, yeah, you'll get the pumps under pressure. Yep. So just, Easy peasy on both taking it off. This one is. You see it coming with the screws. Yep. So, like taking a cam out. Just steady, steady. I think this one is. Right. So I'll have two pumps, like so, two tappets, the hose in between. So all I've got to do now is take them banjos out. Just 13s. Oh, they're not. Two little conventional banjos. Like so, there'll be a pair of washers underneath. I've got to get that out. I've got one that side. Yeah, one there as well. One screw. You see how you've got to take the coolant hoses off before you can get the fuel pumps out. Yes. We've got to have the fuel pipes out of the way to be able to get to these bolts to hold the coolant pipes in. Uh huh. The joys, mate. You could almost do this in your suit. Yeah, these are. The McLarens are easier to build. The McLaren R engines are easier. Yeah. Um, but there's a few more. Like these, you haven't got to do tappets. You haven't got to set valve clearances. Whereas on the McLaren, you have. Yep. Um, and on a McLaren, you've got to send set compound gear lash. 
which on this you haven't, but this has got four chains and the way you hang the cams is with the cam bridge and stuff is just a little bit more fiddly. So both have pluses and minuses. So, hoses out, that hoses out. I took a walk around the um, outside the workshop earlier. Nothing out there, is there? It's empty. Very quiet. Yeah. Apart Not. from about a, a gazillion R8s. Yeah. Counted 18 today. Plus what? Hurricane. Two Hurricanes. Two Hurricanes. Maserati. Yep. Right. So that's loose. So I've unbolted the low pressure sensor bracket off the side of the oil filter housing. Yep. So I'm going to take one pump. Two pumps. So, off. Take the knock sensor bracket screws out. Like so. So that's now. So like the little bracket, the little box on the back is Motac LTC. So that does a lambda um, monitoring for the okay. logger. Yeah, yeah. So I need a 32 to undo that filter housing because you'll never get it undone otherwise. We're going to pull these two fuel rails off. So two fuel rails, oil cooler, oil filter housing, knock sensors, and then we can pull cam bridges. But that is a tappet. If I wipe it off, I don't know whether you can see. That's actually toilet roll. Can you see the scoring in the middle? See it? Yeah. Which discoloured? Yeah. So the cam looks good. So we just need to put a couple of tappets in it. So okay. I'm going to separate these head to head. So I won't put them down with a fuel pump. I'm going to put them with each head. So that's left. So that's right. So that goes with that one. Go with this one. So we try to isolate everything off. So, sorry, mate. Let me just see if I can lower my stand down. And what a, a lovely stand it is. I know. Yeah, the stand is Audi Tour, and then this bar and plate, and the same for what I've got the McLaren, a custom made then. So yep. I've had them made to allow me to hang the engine in a way that. I can strip it all the way down to a bare block. So in a minute, you can show the McLaren block behind me. Right, so these little cast things are a pain. So. It's in three separate pieces. It's in the cast bridge piece that I'm, that I'm unscrewing. Yep. It's in the black, there's the black plastic runners, and then there's the fuel rails. And it's all clamped down by this piece. So I'll take these screws out, look, and I'll show you. Now the cast piece is loose, All right? Then the seals for this will stick themselves to the head. So you have to get in there and lever it out. Just a little catch here. Like so. But you've then also got to try and get the fuel rails to come out with the injectors. So it can all be... It's a bit of a fiddle. Yeah. Like so. Right. Go. Ooh. Like that, see? So we've lost an O-ring. So then the injectors look end up stuck coming out. 
So what I don't want to do is leave any injectors. Yeah. But they are stuck solid. So let me go and get my tool. Right. So all I'm going to do is because my tool doesn't fit them properly, is we we'll just wiggle it out like so. There go. Yeah. So you've got a ceiling ring here, and then that little that black ring there that's the combustion ring so that comes off we change those and then i'll just put them back in the rails for now we'll get them tested but like i can't get these two out so i think what we'll have to do is when the head's off we'll have to address that because otherwise you just snap the connector off yeah so we we'll pop them to that under there like so i need 13s so knock sensor bolts you replace every time so they've got a certain torque and anytime you take them off you change them right because a knock sensor is a microphone a microphone bolt to the engine so if the torque's wrong or because you've used the bolt yeah and it's applying a different clamping pressure to the microphone. So you've always got to make sure that's a clean face and then the bolt sits down and clamps it. If it's wrong, it won't detect the knock right. And it's of course knock that protects your engine from detonation. Yeah, yeah. So they're super, super important. Yeah, yeah, they are important. So let me get that oil cool cracked off. Seven. Seven. So it if it's an engine with no debris, you're normally all right to reuse these. If at any point through this strip down, we get anything metallic or anything debris, that oil cooler is going in a bin. Right. This is gonna make a mess everywhere, so. Four o, o rings like that. So the oil comes out of the oil pump at the bot at the front at this pipe. Yeah. Yeah. So where I've got that plug out is the oil f is that section here. Yeah. Comes up the front up through this hole, through that hole here, up the front here to the underside of this port. Yep. That's the thermostat then that either leads it through the oil cooler or along this hose, this casting. Yep. Yeah. Under the oil temp sensor and up the oil filter housing. Through the filter, down through the center of the filter, down through this port, and then it goes into the bottom of the gallery, into the center of the crankcase where it then shoves it where it needs to go. So that's the oil feed up. So there's a thermostat there and a retention valve, a one-way valve. So that's how the oil flow feeds through. Right, I'll cut the tag off. Like so. Just a little security tag. And just explain the tag again, I know we've... So because it's a race car uh, in a controlled championship, they seal the engines. So there's no way you can do anything to the top end of this engine without taking that tag off. Yeah. So now it's out of the control. It's out of the control section of the championship. So basically if you went and raced, uh, so like Ferrari Challenge Cup or anything like that, and you're in a control car, You'll have, a, you'll have a sealed engine. Yeah. When you then take it out of, say, Challenge Cup and you just go and race it in British GTs, 
you can kind of do what you want. So that's then when we can cut the sit, that's when we can get involved. Yeah. So, pop that up there. Little force point there, look, to crack it. Like so. And then just pull. There we go. And that is it. So, in their molden days, when they were Gen 1 engines, the cams had cutouts, had slots in them, so you could get on a head bolt. Because I don't know whether you can see. You see the head bolt? Mm. Do you want a better light? You might need. Hang on, let's have a look down there. I have a phone in. Just about get it there. Get the... There we go. See it? Right. So if you now go square on, you can see as you try to go square on the head bolt, the cam's in the way. Yep. So on a Gem 1 engine, the cam would have a cutout. When it was timed up in TDC 1, the cam would have a cutout and you could get the tool down there. And then here, which is where the other head bolt is, one, two, three there'd be a 8mm Allen key port. You take it out and you can get a tool on. They've gone to these, they've gone to, they've stopped the cutout on the cam to make the cam stronger, but that now means to take the heads off, I've got to take cam bridges off. Which is great fun. <coughs> Overjoying. So, right. There's no point me showing you how to take another rock cover off, so yep. I'm going to buzz this off, and then I'll come back when I've got it caught up. So, Hang on, we've got a bit of noise in the background. We have, we've Should literally we go? got an audience of idiots. Well, there's someone watching. Hey! Oh. <laughs> I say an audience of idiots and the wife gets offended. I'll pay for that later. <laughs> so, I've just caught up with the other side because there's no point showing you it twice. So, undo the oil filter because if you don't, you'll struggle to get it undone. So then there's two uh, multi splines and two T30s. So we'll pull that off. Then I can pull the breather cover off. Then we'll pull the heads. We we'll pull the heads off now. So, what was that giggle? Jordan's literally sat off shot with a whole bag of cookies and a tea. And his biggest dilemma is he can't hold his tea and eat his cookie at the same time. Are they good dunkers? They're all right. Yeah. Shit tea though. <laughs> <laughs> Did Carl make it? You're all sport around here, it's because I make good tea. So no one else makes it. I used to get it something. I know. See, there we go. There's the love from the wife. There you go, that's it. And it's the week of my 24th birthday and I'm getting crap off her. So, that is. is it. So we'll lift that off. I'm going to put it on a drain tray underneath for a bit because it will spill oil everywhere. So, I think we will do the cam variators and then we'll take the cam bridge, cam bridges off both sides. Yeah. So, let me. George, where's them biscuits gone? So if any, um, any biscuit companies are watching... We'd take sponsorship off McVitie's. <laughs> there are other biscuit manufacturers yeah. out there. Detailing companies keep wanting to sponsor me. I should take them up on it. That could, um, let us know in the comments actually, what is your preferred biscuit while yeah. working on your car? What crumbs would you like to find in your car <laughs> while your mechanic's been working on it? So, same as what I always sort of mentioned, mention it, it again this is different to how we did the Merchelago so this is more like how we did the Daza so the Merchelago because they're individual caps you've got to be careful how you take them off because you can bend the cam yeah. whereas in these there's it's a complete bridge so the cams are carried in the bridge so you still don't want to be reckless but You've got a bit more leeway. You've got a bit more leeway. So what we always do here is, is oh, we just... close up then, sorry mate. Is we take them out, we take half of them out basically, staggered. 
and then we can go in afterwards uh, and bring them off gently, bring them off evenly. But bye. Kate's leaving. Say bye, everyone. Um, we can take them off staggered. But remember as well that the cam bridge is glued. The cam bridge is glued on as well, so you've got to account for that. Let's take them off. So you can't muddle them up because they are inlet and exhaust. Yep. So the exhaust has it's written on it, but if I pull one off, I'll show you. So exhaust and intake. Even if that wasn't written on there, yep. the exhaust is always the one with the spring because the way the retard and the advance works on a cam. So it needs the spring to help it return. There we go. And that is it. So six bolts that hold the tensioner on. Tweak. It's not like it's on dowels or anything, you just kind of get like stitching between the gasket and the oil. Yep. There we go. So here it is. Try and get the gasket off the back of it. Pull it off a minute. So, I feel pretty clean to be fair. We've got some discoloration on them, but there's no grooves worn into them. Yeah, I can't even feel that. You can see, you can see the marks, but that's not even a... Yep, they're all good. Yep, we will replace them. Just as a matter of course. So what do you do with the bits that get replaced? Just literally throw them away. Maybe there's a giveaway coming. There, well, yeah, there. pistons, pistons, rods, yep. that sort of thing. I mean, we've got stuff like that kicking around everywhere. They make good uh, door stops, paperweights. Yeah, so if, I think there's even, um, JM on cars took a load because he's got a friend who builds ornaments, Yep. which is the one in my engine, uh -huh. in my office. So stuff like that, but yeah, I had thought about all the like old used pistons we've got, like laser etching them and, you know, just like you said, having a bit of a paperweight. Having an RE performance paperweight. Yeah. So, obviously, cams are reversed on this side. So, inlet intake cams are both on the inside, exhaust cams are both on the outside. So you've got to remember things like that. You know, then when you start doing pistons and stuff like that, you've got to remember that you put the pistons in opposite ways because the intake valves are always on the on the inside. So just little stuff like that, really. The rods have got to face a certain direction because they've got their, on the big ends, they've got a thrust face that rubs on each other. Uh -huh. So you've got to get that right. And then the side that goes, the thrust side that goes on the crank has got a radius. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. One. Like so. Four, five, six. There we go. Right, so we're in there. Again, a little 
speak on the top. So you've got a little gauze look to protect it. So the oil comes in through that port and goes to both sides. So you've got a little gauze to protect it. And you've got the plastic runners. And that's it. And then oil pressure comes in the back, pushes on that plunger, which pushes this out. So we always know the chain's going in that direction. Yep. The chain's being pulled on, on this side because you'll never have a tensioner on the pull side. So it's always on the free side. So you can look at a tensioner and know which direction of rotation the engine is. So, right, we'll that down there. We have got... So on the ends of the heads, we've just got some bolts that help seal the gasket. long 30 for those then there's so there's two allen keys on the outside three t30s behind this cover sorry mate when you wait go on then. kick that trolley out of the way mate yeah so they support the head these five hold the head to the crankcase on the side of the gasket that loops around the chain yep bolt that never wants to come out. See, that's where you've got to be switched on. Like I went to take those two bolts out, yeah. but it's not. I've got two trolleys for two course, heads. Of course. So just got to... Let me get a magnet a second. Right, so we've now got tensioners off. Obviously I've got some out of the cambridge on that side. So what we'll do is, is we'll start spinning out these cambridge bolts to get the cams and the cambridge off. And then we can get the head off. We're doing well. So any um, differences or variations with this engine to the road going version? Uh, no, because it's a homologated engine. Yep. So they might, They've normally got like restrictors, so there'll be differences in the control systems, but engine wise, no. Which yeah. is why when you start looking at certain Hurricane engines and certain R8 engines, which is very rare, the Decennium's got it, but certain engines have got uh, like titanium valves. Yep. Um, and that's so that the engine is homologated for use. So they can build a really rare trick engine with everything in um, and use it in racing. So they've got the future motorsport use in mind. Yeah. 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 So the same as really like you can like my old BMW that was an S1000 RR and for 35 grand you can go and buy an M1000 RR and the M1000 RR is aimed at that's more and more of a race bike. That's yeah. the stuff you want uh, in the, in a race series whereas you know, for my sort of level, you're not too bothered. Might need a little bit of a different tool. I just need to start, because I'm off on these bolts and the gasket hasn't gone. So we just need to get the gasket to break. Just to start. Because what I don't want to do is keep winding the screws off and then it go with a big jump. Yep. So you've got to be mindful of the... Because it's strong stuff, it's like bloody windscreen sealant. There we go. There's one lever point there. One under here. So there are set points that you can do this? Yeah, where you're not having to lever on the mating surface. So yep. they've got like little right angles on them. There you go, you see? 
So you've just got to go in the right place. It's in the it's in the workshop manual. There we go. Now we're going. So now we've started to break that. Still got a little bit more to break this end, I think. But it will start to come away under the control of the screws. And if you didn't do that, what's the worst case? The worst case is you get the screws out loads and loads and loads, and then the glue goes and it like jumps. Yeah. So it take it takes a big shock. Yeah. And the problem there is one, you've either got them so far out that you know, you're holding a cambridge in your hand um, and you damage something. Yep. Or two, you throw bits across the work it throws bits across the workshop. No point trying to do it on the 28, I think there are screws that hold the cambridge on. Yeah. No point trying to do it on 28. You just as long as you've got some control, some balance, trying to keep the cams, you know, as straight as you can taking them off. You start to you feel, hear it, you? yeah, yeah, like relaxing. And then you get to a certain point where the screws just don't, there you go, one. screws just don't do anything anymore. Yep, that's gone. Right, let me just buzz them screws out. So the cams aren't held on dowels. When we assemble it, we put special pins in to assemble it and then we pull the pins back out. Whereas on Gem 1, they sat on dowels. Right. Just still a little bit of glue on it on that same. There it is. Gasket will obviously replace. That's the pump lobe, and then these are the individual cam lobes, and they look mint. Not a mark on them. Couple of little marks in the journal, but like I can't even feel them. They just look like it's been polished. But yeah, good stuff. Clean as a whistle, mate. So now you've got a like roller rockers. So just check them all over, because these take a pound in. Especially on a race engine where it's high average RPM. Yeah. It's like, can you see how, how dark everything's stained? Like, oh, it's almost got like a black tinge to it in the engine. Just where the oil's. So, journals all look good. Can you see that dirt in there, look? Yeah. So again, you'd probably say you just need to increase the service life. So like oil needs to come through. It feels like melted plastic. There's no damage to the tips of the valves. They all look clean. What are the marks yeah. on the springs? Where are you looking at? Uh, color codes. So okay. uh, because they're genuine springs, they'll come through. Yep. And the color codes mean spring tension. So can you see like all that dirt settling? Yeah. Yeah, so the, the colour codes are just like colour codes on a road spring. Right. So it just tells them what the... Because they're the same as like... They're the same springs as like in a 2 litre TFSI. Okay. It's pretty much the same yeah. valve geometry. When you start looking at part numbers, a lot of the parts are the same. In your Lamborghini? Yeah. 12. Right, let me just get a gun and buzz them out. So, at least with the head off, I can put some force in from the combustion side, yep. rather than break an injector top or something. Two, three, four, five, six. Obviously all the head bolts will go in a the bin. They're, they've been used, so they're worthless now. More paperweights. Mm. 
and remember it's a V engine so it shouldn't go anywhere but you don't want to take that risk so just always support the head right one two So, brown valves. Hey. If that doesn't tell you it's running on race fuel, nothing will. <laughs> this is no obvious signs, like no staining, no blow by. You get clouds if it was. Yeah, no colour, no. Yep. Just wait. The balls look good. All right, we can only sort of see three of them. If you look down, you can see there's no big scuffing. I think looks pretty clean. Good stuff. So that's okay. Can't turn it over at the minute because I've got the other bank locked. Yep. So what I think I'll do is I'll um, uh, just whip the other head off quick. There's no point showing you that because it's the same. And then once I've got it, once I've got both heads off, we yep. can put timing cover and breather cover off. So give me five minutes, pull that head off, and then yeah, we'll come back. Cool. Other heads off. So we've got the breather top to take off, the timing cover to take off, the timing chains on the back to take off, and then we can flip her over. So there's no point showing you the other head and how it comes off. So we literally, again, crack everything off and then we can just buzz everything out super quick so you need t30s in your toolkit if you're going to work on uh, all of these bad boys yeah you can see the rear main look starting to have a hard time already so this has got a racing transmission in it so it's got a proper flywheel and a proper clutch it's got a stacked clutch, but you can see where the rear main look is um, starting to complain and weep in. And then the clutch dust is picking up on it. So that's why the rear main looks dirty. Rear main looks a bit sort of tired. Because the rest of it has been fairly mint, doesn't it? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. The, um, just, just little bits and pieces. Like you can see where at times it's had, a, it's had repairs or it's had this done or that done. Yeah. Like Jubilee clips where there should be spring clips or like you'll see now when we flip it over and get to the oil pump, you'll see that the, um, the oil pump's got a tag on it as well. It's got a seal on it. So again, don't use them to break the break the tightness but just to run them out so the trick with these is we've got one two three points where we can wind a screw in and pull it off the dowels so this is because, otherwise, you will never, ever, ever, you, you'll be battering a case. So that's where I know, get the T-bat. And my T30. So now what I can do is, I can wind these in, and I start to pull the case off. Yep. Yeah. You can see it's going luck. We'll drain that bottom. I think there's oil in the bottom of the engine, mate. So we can literally run them back out. And 
mat. This is how you pull the timing case. Yeah, so if I just chuck that over here a minute to drain off. So, that's the timing system. That's how it would look. So you've got crankshaft, you've got center idler, tensioner, that's the oil pump drive gear, and that sprocket is bolted to the gear behind. The gear behind then drives the power steering drive, which is still there, but it's blocked off on the case because it's a Gen 2 or Hurricane, it doesn't have hydraulic power steering, it's electronic power steering. So that's just blacked off on the rear timing case, but it is in there behind it. And then this one here is air con drive. So that's the, that's the drive unit for the air conditioning drive shaft. Again, it's a race car, so you don't have that. Then off the second timing gear behind, so on the crank, it's got two timing wheels. Then that drives these big outer ones yep. and they're on idlers. And then that is obviously left chain, variant and tensioner, and that is right chain. So it's quite a complicated sort of tensioning system. Yep. So, sort of the rules still apply. You just gotta make sure your cams are locked and your cranks locked. As long as, as long as it's all locked, it's fine. You can't really make too many mistakes then. Um, so what we're gonna do is, I've put a pin in the tensioner, We'll just start pulling timing chains off. Just gotta be careful how you wiggle. Four. gear will come like so right, so there's one like so um two different fixings there but I'm gonna try and pop a pin So they're not hard to push. They're just progressive. So you've just got to keep tension on them yep. to get them to back off. Like so. So if I then go. One. Two. Three. So now I can buzz. We've got the bottom chain and tensioner off. This is a center chain and tensioner. So we'll take the tensioner off. So again, it, look, it doesn't look bad. It's a little O-ring in behind, so you've got to make sure when you put the tensioner in, you put that seal in, otherwise you won't get any tension. So we've got an M12 multi-spline on this side and a little eight on that side because how they fix to the engine is different. So that one bolts with two little pins, that one bolts straight to the case, that one bolts straight to the block. Yep. But this one's on a little carrier, which I'll show you now. So this is two two bolts to hold the top guide on. And we've got 
got two bolts that hold the bottom guide on, like so. And we've got this bolt here that holds that assembly on. But can you see how they're mounted different, look? So this one mounts on the carrier yeah. and that one's bolted straight to it. Yeah. So we we'll pull the breather plate out. One, two. That's the breather plate. So if you look now through there, you can see how it opens up into the main crankcase. Aha. Uh -huh. That's just a breather side of there. Right? The bit that you don't, if you're doing any engine build, you need to make sure you get out. So can you see this here? Yeah. So that's main core plug, main oil gallery plug. So before that goes in the wash, you want to make sure that's out. So there's one there. A washer that's stuck. Yeah. There is one here. So these are all oil galleries. So one, you make sure you put them back in <laughs> because you find out the hard way. Then there's two more in the crank in the casing, which we will sort out. Yep. We'll get out in a minute. Um, yeah. No point. No point washing your block if you can't wash through your oil galleries. So if you don't take your your gallery plugs out, you're not you're not really cleaning the block properly. Yeah. Because that's what you're trying to clean. It's all well and good cleaning the faces. You know, you know, like all this space you can see, but yeah, yeah. what you can't see then is all the galleries, the oil flows through. So if we just get on the back, we can just give it a little tap to break. So what we're trying to do there is, so that's the oil pump drive shaft. Yeah, but we're trying to break that ridge of sealant there, that's yeah. all. So that's what we're doing. So let me pull that off. Oh, and that is time inside, pretty much done. So I'll pull a breather off the top just because while I'm here and I flip it upside down, it can leak everywhere. Yep. What I might do quick is pull the eight mil out of the crankcase. Just under here. So this is a hole in the bottom of the crankcase. The locking pin goes. Yeah. Uh, but I'll take this out and oil will come out because this is the lowest point of the, of the crankcase. So. Like that. So at least then when I flip it over now, I'm not letting all that crap. All right, and then there is a million and one of these. But the good news is if I pull this off now, the reason I do this now, even though it's a little bit laborious, is that when I flip it over, uh, any oil that's left in a the crankcase then can drain out the top and it will just drain into the, into the pan. Yep. Because what you're essentially trying to do is get as much oil out of the engine as possible before you start cleaning it. Yeah, so even before we put it in the motor tank, which is sort of what we use to get the oil off, you know, you want as much gone as possible. Because otherwise all you're doing is, is you're just contaminating all your cleaners. Yeah, of course. Let gravity do its thing first. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I mean, it's, you know, it's not going to go 
There's a little lever point there, so that'll go. Oh, there we go. So I'm literally just going to flip this upside down on the tank underneath. So, got the breather plate off, which mounts the oil cooler and the oil filter housing. So we've got pressure relief valve here. So that's just a valve to uh, bypass any pressure out of the system. So I'll pop that on the top. Then we have got... By the way, if it looks a bit smoky in the background, suddenly. Yeah, we've had a car running and it was a bit smoky. Uh, then, literally, the drain back valves. So these are in the top of the block. Uh, they look like they're blind screws, but they are not. They have, can you see light through them? So there's five of those. They're quite delicate. So you just gotta, but we've had them blocked before. So just have to make sure they're clean and the jets aren't blocked. Do, do, do. So just spin them out quick. And then we're nearly there. We can flip her over. Right, that is top end done. So if I go that way, you will see all the mess. just comes out of there everywhere so right so we will take the auxiliary carrier off because I can't get the lower sump off with that in place bit of a noisy bit this off we can pull the oil pump pull a lower pan and then pull the lower girdle to get to the crank these sit on dowels so this is what the alternator is mounted to there we go. so you've got a dowel there so just give it a tap make sure it's in a load of t30s Hold the oil pump on. There's 13 of them. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Somewhere has put some random five mils in. Right, that's loose. There is a T30 under here and a clamp, so I need a pair of pliers. Oh, a bit hard to see down, but is a water hose there yep. for the water pump to the front of the block. So make sure we get that out. And then I just need to, the hose comes off. Lovely, like so. And loosen the supporting bracket for the oil pump, which is a T30 there. All right, and then we can literally just buzz that out. These 13 top ones. Right, so there's two dowels here and here. So when you put the bolts in, those dowels go in and they, they locate. You just see them there, look? And then there's one there. So when your pump's going in, they, um, there you go, you can see it starting to go, look. So we've got to come off the dowels, right? Like so. And then we've got to come towards me because it's engaged on a water pipe, which is what's creeping. And okay, 
So this is the oil pump drive shaft seal cover or oil pump drive shaft cover. So that's a tube that when I pulled the auxiliary drive out, came out that long drive shaft, yep. that's that. Right. So that's fine. Then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight little gauzes. So they're the scavenge gauzes. So they stop anything um, that the, um, this falling into the sump, yep. getting picked up by the scavenge. Right, we'll pull this little dowels out. So that's them. We normally need, I don't think my pick will grab them. Yeah, I need to find a pick. So I have got to, this is then, if I come towards you, mate. So, you. so now we've got the oil pump drive seal plate and the o-ring inside it so before i can take this pan off i need to take this plate off because it it covers it's bolted to both cases yeah. so all we will do is, and they're like always bloody loctited all the way through you know when people go like i love that this is where you want to put a gun on it yeah. but you'll snap the head off you just snap the screw that kind of abuse on it from an air gun or from a battery gun. So don't do it. No, it's just easier to, you know, if it was loose and it was coming out with no force, yeah, put a, put a runner on it, but that's not, that's just tight all the way out. So it's easier to just do that. So when we do like oil pump drive seal changes, what you've just seen me do, pull that pump off, is what we do, but yep. obviously the engine's in the car. Like so. People will be wishing they had music today, mate. <laughs> what, what video did you watch of Rex? Him undoing some really long screws. <laughs> A bit to pay attention on once we've got this out obviously that cover will then come off but the bit to pay attention then is the t30 perimeter screws are all different lengths so you right. have to be you have to be careful so i don't muddle up the middle the upper the lower crankcase and the sump i don't muddle them up because you'll end up with like eight different bloody sized screws so try and keep them separate and you literally just wander around Crack all the T30s. So you like straight away, first four screws. Three different sizes. There we go. So that's where you just need to be a little bit organized on what goes where. Yeah. Because what you don't want to happen is, all right, it's, it's obvious between say those two, you know, you're obviously not gonna get those end two muddled up. But if you get some that are a couple of mil apart, yeah. the thread of the screw will bottom out before the head does. So you, then you've got no cramping force. So that's what you've got to be. That's what you've got to be careful of. Two and two. Right. So if I go and grab my e, e sockets, we can pull that cover off. So two seconds. So. We've got inners and outers to undo. And they're different sizes, uh, different lengths and different torques on assembly. So we have to be careful with that. Can we do it with me? Can we do it with me? It's like a community centre. Eh? Jay's just turned up his RS3 because it's going on the dyno tomorrow, so that's what you can hear in the background. Right, so that's the outers all done in sequence. So now back round the other way and do all the inners. So the difficulty, the pain in the ass thing with this is the sump is held on 
The upper crankcase is obviously held on with these bolts and so is the sump. But the upper crankcase is glue, so you have to prepare your sealant, your glue, on the upper crankcase when you assemble it. Yep. Put it all together. Put these bolts in with washers underneath because you're not, the sump is obviously placing, taking a certain amount of force, uh, a certain amount of distance. So we've got a spacer plate. So you have to put all these bolts in, torque them down, let the sealant go off, which is what I normally do, let the sealant go off overnight, then take them back out, then glue the sump on, because you'll see now, once I take these out, the main caps, I'm basically undoing the main caps. Yeah. So, I'm literally just, if I buzz two out, right? Yeah. See the dot on the top? Yep. So the dot is the short one. So okay. the dot should always be on the outside. So then you can see. Yeah. That's the difference. So it's only slight. It's got a big torque difference as well. So again, these are one-time use. You go in the bin. deal as what we did earlier there's some spaces you can wind screws in to help you break the dowels yep. so we just put three in See? So that's that plate that carries the O ring for the drive seal. So that fits in like that. Yeah. So when they leak, it's because that O ring goes all crusty. RS6 V10s have the same problem. Right. So that's it. Take that off. Put it in there. And then. off so one two three voila go. so that's the collector in the bottom so all the oil drains out the bottom drops to the bottom and ends up in this yep. but can you see how grotty it is yeah. yeah so it should be clean so that to me says like all this back here look dad you see all that once I put that through the wash tank, mate, that'll be aluminium. So that says to me, it's quite fuel heavy. Oh, it's quite combustion heavy. Yep. So, uh, I need that. Right, so same, same thing again now. We've got the mains out, so I haven't got to worry about that. But now I've got loads of screws that I need to those out. And this is the problem, like, can you see the oil pump behind me? Just dribbling onto the floor. Yeah. Figured out what this is. That's rubber off tires. Ah. Off the of slicks. Yeah, yeah. Like it doesn't feel like, like it rings a bell and it's like, yeah, my bike's normally covered in that crap as well. Yeah, yeah. It's a race car thing. Yeah. <laughs> right, so this is going to be telltale now. When, you put, when we pull this off, what state the bearings in? That's, that's the key. That's the million dollar question. Yeah. So I would probably say at the minute from what I've seen, probably set of rings. Let me move some of these things out of the way. Uh, do a set of rings, 
um, valve springs just because the average RPM um, and then obviously bearings yep. but then uh, new timing chains and then I'll put it to the owner then whether they want to do valves uh, because it's done 10,000 kilometers that's not part of the rebuild spec but a couple of hundred quid now is yeah. better Good than a couple of thousand you, you know yeah. tens of thousands of pounds on it when it decides it doesn't want to play anymore so I'm just gonna they're the upper girdle screws I'm gonna pop them there where's this side out that's the water hose off the back of the oil pump. So that's off the back of the water pump. There's a little transfer pipe. And the one I always forget is you turn it over, look, like, you see that hole's full of oil. Yep. And it goes missing. There's a screw in there. <laughs> and you'll be like, why is this not coming out? No, you know. And it's that deep. Yeah. Which you always forget. So, magnet. Yeah, there it is. Right, same again. So, we've got two areas we can put these bolts back in. to help break the help break seal. There she goes. Yeah. There it is. Uh, no, no, I got my support wound in, so it was catching. One, two, three. There you go. There it is. So there's no debris, that is just mileage. Yeah, there's no scores, there's no wears, it's just starting to pull through on the top coat. Yeah. So there's nothing that would... I bet if we looked at the crank, there's nothing on it. Yep. Like here, do you see that spot there? We, that's the worst one. Yep. You see it? Just where the bearing's starting to come. You could find that's a little bit of imbalance as well, because that's number one. So that's right on the net, that's right on the pulley. Yep. So you could find that's just like a wear spot coming through because of balance. So if we look at the back here. Yeah, I mean, look, mate, crank's mint. Crank is mint. It does look good. There's my thrust washers. So in theory, this thrust washer should be fine. But this thrust washer will probably take a little bit because there's a clutch. There we go. So because it's got a clutch on it and it's pushing the crank into the thrust washer. Can you see we're starting to go? Yep. Again, nothing major, just engine with some wear on it. So all right, let's pull that seal out. So, pick a number between one and ten. Let's knock a rod and a piston out. Two. You want to go two? You would go one. I can't get two, Jay. <laughs> Say three. Mm. Right, we'll go for three. We're going for three. There we go. Right. So three is this one. We'll pull three. Just make sure there's no carbon buildup on the top of the bore. Like, uh, maybe not so bad on new engines, but on old engines, you'll try and pull a piston out and it'll get snagged. Yep. So just, so it's just like, it's just like sticky build up. We just wipe it, wipe it off, look. Like that. Yeah. Right, so we're doing three. So we'll just, we'll only do one. There's no need to do them all. 
10 times the same thing. So we literally just crack a rod box off. All right. Like a so. Might need a more sturdy attack. Two rod bolts, they're scrap, so we reuse the rod bolts. Sorry, we don't reuse the rod bolts. Yeah. Right. This rod bolts out. Okay. The rods, can you see in between? Can you see that flat machine pad? Yep. Can you see halfway down the pad on the left, down the slope, there is an arrow? It's not an arrow, it's an indent. Can you see it? Just there? Yeah. That means point two other rod. So if I take this cap off. That's better, actually, right? You see it? Yep. Point two other rod. So when you put two rods in, yep. they should face each other because that thrust surface and that bearing edge is different to that thrust surface and that radius edge. So that's how you assemble a V10. So. You tell bearings are a little bit tired sometimes when you, when they sort of relax out of the, <laughs> cap like when you get new ones you try to put them in it'd be a nightmare right so can you see how that bearing is sat in the cap it's sat towards the left yep. yeah so this side i know this side doesn't have the arrow on because this is a crank side because you don't want the bearing to the edge because you need it to account for the radius on the crank so the crank isn't square edge the crank is radius so if you put it in that way that bearing edge will wind itself into the crank yeah we don't want that. and we don't want that you can't get it well i can't put that on wrong now because the rod's in right yeah. because they're dowelled but this is something now manufacturer will put like a pit a, a mark like that and in the manuf in the assembly diagram it would just say align marks on assembly but cp won't tell you that or you know who else does rods and pistons uh, callies or you know uh italian AP, rp they won't tell you that you gotta know and if you don't know why that is if i give that to someone how many people would now know all right we told them how many people would know why that bearing's offset it's the same reason like people think the bearing's tang to stop it spinning yep. it's not it's just, just to locate it that little tang will never stop a bearing spinning you think if a bearing can spin lock up and stop an engine dead like you can't even hang on it with a bar that little tang mate ain't doing a bloody thing, like, you know? So, two bolts, a cap, and then in theory, I should be able to push this straight at the bottom. Right, straight away, piston looks mint. Yeah, there's a little particle score there. Yep. All right, so I'll flip it over, and again, looks mint. No dull pad. Yeah, a couple of br a couple of brushes, but like we see some where the, that middle square is completely worn out. That looks all right. So, same as the mains, bearings just look tired. Yeah, so they're not worn out, there's no particle scores, but what happens is, as the bearing wears, so like the old M3s have the same problem, where the big ends bearings go, they wear, and then eventually they will, they will fail so no bad thing but if you look in here <coughs> so we hone a rod journal uh, so we, ho we hone a rod to be perfectly round but a bearing is not perfectly even in its thickness it's fat at the top and thin at the sides right and that's because they, we have to account for bearing crush so what keeps a bearing from spinning in a journal is as you clamp it down the two bearing halves squash together and force themselves out on the cap and the rod this is why you should always make sure you've never got anything between the bearing and the cap they're always perfectly clean because it will affect your bearing clearance so now when i turn that sideways you can completely understand why can you see that unworn section there yep 
that's because there's no force exerted on the bearing there. The bearing's got nothing to support because a, road, a rod's never under a, a sort of lateral load, right? And that's why you get that clean stripe on the bearing because that's where the crush area is. So the bearing's this thinnest point here. So we always say never measure a bearing on its edge. You always measure a bearing on its thickest part. And that is why. Same that side, look. And we'll take all of them out, they'll be the same. But if I take that rod out, clamp it up, measure it, that rod will be perfectly circle. So it's all in a bearing. <coughs> so, that thing looks clean. No marks on the skirt. I put a rings under a microscope, but rings are a little bit tired. The second one's Napier cut, so that's full oil control ring. Napier cut ring, second ring, which is, as it comes down, it sort of cuts in as well. So it's like almost like a seven shaped ring. Yep. So it's got a relief for the oil, because what happens if it doesn't, the oil, if the oil control ring's overwhelmed, it can jack the second ring and it can push it off. So the only thing that starts, everyone goes, oh yeah, yeah, it's, it's, spr it's the springiness of the rings that keep it in contact. It isn't, which is why some pistons have what's called gas port in around the top the edge of the piston where the combustion pressure can get down into the groove for the first ring. It's combustion pressure that pushes the ring out. So it gets down the side of the pistons, down in behind the ring, and that's what pushes the ring out. So yes, you want a bit of springiness, but we can't measure that, that's not a number. So all we can do is control the clearance. So you've got, if you get two excess blow by on the top ring, it can over, overwhelm the second. And if you get excess oil, if your oil control ring can't control the excess oil, then it overwhelms the second. So the top one deals with the heat and the pressure, the bottom one deals with the oil, and the middle one deals with all of it. So it's, yeah, the piston looks mint. It's good to see a decent one for a change. Yeah. Normally, uh, we take them out and they're a yeah. state, aren't they? Marley units, inlet, obviously you can have exhaust valve cutouts, but you always got inlet valve cutouts because the inlet valve is the biggest valve. Yeah, it's domed to increase compression. Yeah, and then it's got the squirt, it's got the tumble flat pad in the middle for to disrupt the injection path or to tumble the injection path so you get good combustion. But yeah, mate, it looks mint. We'll Thanks. flip it over. I can't flip it over. Uh, so I wonder if I can turn it sideways slightly. So I can't turn it upside down because obviously we've got nothing supporting the crank. So I've just tilted it slightly. So you can come around here, look, and you can see. So if you stick your camera in there, cleans the whistle, mate. You see it? Oh, we don't see them like that very often, do we? No. So I mean, all right, you've got a little bit of rock right there, just on the top, but I can still see the cross hatching through it. So yeah, that is mint, mate. So I can't imagine, like you can see, look at those. So again, like a little tiny particle score, that drag line, yep. but that's nothing. You can't feel, you can't feel it. So yeah. Good God, mate. So literally now I'll pull the rest of rods and pistons out. You don't need me to see that. You don't need to see me do that 10 times. Pull a crank out, wash it, measure it, all the bearings, new rod bolts, new rings, clean the pistons. That's bottom end done. Uh, I'll go back to the owner and I'll say that uh, we should probably put a set of valves in it. I'll strip the heads, cut the seats, skim the heads, uh, new valve stem seals, new springs, just as a matter of course. Um, clean everything else up, test the injectors because um, we've got to get them out of the heads because I couldn't move them. Um, test the injectors and then yeah, literally clean everything, put it back together. Happy days. It is. So, so yes, we'll get parts ordered and we will try and do, it's very, very hard to do an engine assembly video, but we'll try and do bits, okay. whether it turns into a, today we build the bottom end or, yep whether that turns into a me with a GoPro bit, but that's how you strip a V10 in under an hour. Ish. Ish. <laughs> what time did we start? I, it was, Maybe must have been 11. 11. And I have messed around a bit and gone off camera and You've sorted had to do that, some other work as it's well. It's yeah. 3 33. So it's taken us we stop for lunch as four well. hours. Not bad. So, yeah. So can you strip a V10 in an hour? <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> We've learned something. <laughs> So, thank you for watching, and smash that subscribe button. Nice one, guys. We'll see you next week. See you next time.